To understand the taking of precepts more fully, let us propose that there are levels of morality. The lowest level is adherence to a set of rules and regulations laid down by somebody else. It could be your favorite prophet, it could be the state, the head of your tribe, or a parent. No matter who generates the rules, all you have to do at this level is know the rules and follow them. The next level consists of obeying the same rules, even in the absence of somebody who will enforce those rules. You obey because you have internalized the rules. You enforce them yourself every time you break one. This level requires a bit of mind control. But if your thought pattern is chaotic, your behavior will be chaotic too. Mental cultivation reduces mental chaos. There's a third level of morality, which might better be termed as ethics. This level is a quantum leap up the scale from the first two levels, a complete shift in orientation. At the level of ethics, a person does not follow hard and fast rules dictated by authority. A person chooses to follow a path dictated by non-conceptual awareness, wisdom, and compassion. This level requires real intelligence and an ability to juggle all the factors in every situation to, to arrive at a unique, creative, and appropriate response each time. Furthermore, the individual making these decisions needs to have dug themselves out of a limited personal viewpoint. The person has to see the entire situation from an objective point of view giving equal weight to their own needs and those of others. <clears throat> so the lighting of candles signifies a ceremony in process, a custom that comes to us from a time past when large temples and monasteries, usually nestled high in the mountains, were illuminated only by candlelight. So if you'd like to light candles, so now. Give a moment for that. For a moment, it looked like heaven was lighting up the ocean, right? <laughs> the lighting of incense throughout the ceremony is symbolic of the majesty and immense value of our tradition, this ceremony, and the precepts that we under are undertaking. So you can light some incense if you have some. My wife doesn't allow it, so we will not be lighting it. Johnson, you have your bell. Would you like to? Oh. Homage to the Triple Jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Buddham Sharanam Gachami Dhamam Sharanam Gachami Sangam Sharanam Gachami Homage to our Buddha nature that is present in its wonder at this assembly. Homage to the Dharma, which is present in its brilliance at this assembly. Homage to all the Sangha who are present in their glory at this assembly. Mantra welcoming the three jewels. 
Namu bo bo jo li ka li da li ta ta a daya. Namu bo bo jo li ka li da li ta ta a daya. Namu bo bo jo li ka li da li ta ta a daya. Thank you both for reciting those chants so perfectly. My heart was stirring because I know my great teacher would have been very proud. <clears throat> he was quite the chanter. <laughs> <clears throat> Preceptees, repeat along for the following segment with your microphones on mute so we don't get too much feedback. <clears throat> we most earnestly send forth our homage to the precious one, the most profound Dharma, the one, the true, the eternally quiescent, which for all sentient beings in the 10 directions appeared, which is the universe in its purity, transcending speech, flowing equally into the five teachings and the three vehicles. We most earnestly send forth our homage to the precious ones, the most pure Sangha, those sentient beings enlightened rapidly or slowly, whose love increases with their wisdom, whose devotion benefits both themselves and others. We earnestly aspire that our engagement to the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha may deliver us to awakening according to our need, and that these, they may be for us as a witness, and that they may all together receive our veneration. May their splendor fill all space, as the moon reflected in a thousand rivers is yet one. And may the resolve of all the awakened ones, the bodhisattvas possessing to perfection the four wisdoms, be present at this assembly to the welfare of all sentient beings. On the seat of wisdom, most distinguished and adorned, all Buddhas have sat and attained supreme awakening. In reverence, do we now offer these seats that we and others may all together attain the way of the Buddhas. <clears throat> Mantra of offering the seats to the Sangha. Om Baaraminaya Sabaha. Om Baaraminaya Sabaha. Om ba ara mi na ya sa ba ha. The mantra of the universe in its purity. The simplest of all the chants, which I saved for myself. Om nam. Om nam. Om nam. We make offerings to all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, of the past, present, and future, and to all the Dharmas, even those not yet known, and to the Sangha of distinguished followers, self-enlightened beings, and bodhisattvas. May we aspire to model in our own lives all the wisdom and compassion that these beings manifest, and selflessly share those qualities with all other beings. If you're not seated, please do. Okay, so traditionally, if we were in a physical setting, uh, each pre uh, precept participant would stand uh, per group and offer incense. That would be a lot of incense. Um, <clears throat> but for now, we've already read our, uh, lit our incense and I think we could proceed to bowing three times to the beat of the Moktak. Johnson, you have yours? Um.
preceptees, repeat along for the following segment with your microphones on uh, mute. May the Buddha Shakyamuni serve as our example and guide for his teachings liberate us all from the disease of our earthly uh, existence. May all beings realize their true nature and help all others do the same. May we who struggle in this earthly existence transcend its impermanent nature and realize the oneness that is manifest beyond words and concepts. Om Om Trusting the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, the Mahasanga, to serve as our teachers. May the teachings of Buddha Shakyamuni be present and serve as our original teacher. May the ideal of the Bodhisattva Ma Manjushri be present and serve as our precepts teacher. May the endeavoring of the future Buddha Maitreya be present and serve as our instructor. May the spirit of all Buddhas of the 10 directions be present and serve to witness and confirm our precepts. May the compassion of all Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions be present as companions in our study. And may the Maha Sangha be ever present and mindful to serve protect and adorn our practice. Okay, we're getting into the precepts proper now. What I love about the precepts is it's not a limitation on our lives at all. Rather, it frees us because we know how to respond because the precepts give us a direction. They're like those blinking uh, yellow or white arrows on the highway when they tell you to merge. You just follow that. And from there, that gives you the freedom to act spontaneously with compassion and wisdom. So the first precept, I vow to support all living creatures and to refrain from killing. The second precept, I vow to respect the property of others and to refrain from stealing. The third precept, I vow to regard all beings with respect and dignity and to refrain from objectifying others. The fourth precept, I vow to be truthful and to refrain from lying. The fifth precept, I vow to maintain a clear mind and to refrain from harming myself or others with intoxica intoxication. <laughs> um, so can these precepts, each one of them be kept by you or can they not, can they not? They can be kept. And these precepts, each one of them be kept by you or can they, uh, can they not? Say it forcefully. They can be kept. Can these precepts, each one of them be kept by you or can they not? Repeat one more time. They can be kept. Ah, oh, wonderful. <laughs> My teacher would say. <clears throat> we have already taken the five precepts and now we and we now vow to uphold the following precepts. The sixth precept, I vow to be kind and to encourage others and to refrain from discouraging others, including myself. The seventh precept. I vow to speak critically and honestly about myself and to refrain from being boastful and self-centered. I vow to be generous, to be grateful for what I have, and to refrain from yearning for things that do not belong to me. The ninth precept, I vow to promote harmony and refrain from acting in anger or hatred. The tenth precept, I vow to affirm and uphold the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Um, can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so kept. They can be so kept. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so kept. They can be so kept. 
Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so they kept. Can be so kept. Wonderful. We have already taken the 10 precepts, and now <coughs> we now vow to uphold the following precepts. I vow to respect my teachers and friends in the Dharma. I vow to abstain from entering into intoxicating situations or consuming substances intended to distract from this moment. I vow to be conscious of what I consume, the way in which it was, it is, was produced, and what harm might result from my consuming it. I vow to bring awareness to the impact of what I ingest and take care not to harm myself or any other beings in the process. This was one that I remember working on with the late, great Wanji, and it was very important to maintain. I vow to maintain the integrity and sanctity of the teacher clergy to student relationship by never entering into a sexual or otherwise inappropriate relationship and thereby, thereby violating the trust of the student as well as the entire Sangha. I vow to encourage others to view past mistakes as learning opportunities that enable them to make better choices in the future. I vow to always request the Dharma and make offerings to visiting Sangha members. I vow to attend Dharma talks and events that will open my mind, my heart and mind, thus enabling my practice to grow stronger and allowing me to be a better service to others. I vow not to divide the Dharma into separate vehicles or doctrines by placing one classification as higher or better than another. I vow to always give care to the sick and the needy. I vow to abstain from the storing of weapons used to intentionally take away life. I vow to abstain from serving as an emissary of the military, except in nonviolent roles such as chaplaincy, medical positions, and other roles that do not directly engage in the violent expression of military service. I vow to conduct my livelihood in a way that is helpful to myself and others and refrain from business practices that limit the freedom or happiness of others. I vow to communicate in a way that is true, accurate, and helpful, and to refrain from speech meant to plant seeds of doubt, misinformation, or gossip. I vow to support life by behaving in a way that respects and protects the environment as well as all beings, and to refrain from activities that may cause harm. I vow to teach the Dharma in a manner that inspires awakening and well-being for myself and others. I vow to fully understand the Dharma so that I may teach it in a manner that is true, accurate, and helpful. I vow to share the Dharma as freely as I have received it, with no personal gain as my motive. I vow to serve others with commitment, kindness, and integrity. I vow to communicate in a direct and compassionate manner that promotes harmony and to refrain from speech that contains hidden or implied messages meant to cause harm or unhappiness. I vow to liberate all sentient beings from suffering and the causes of suffering. I vow to treat others with respect and to refrain from behaving in a manner that violates, harms, or imposes revenge on others. I vow to conduct myself in a manner that is consistent with the Dharma, to remain humble and accessible, and to refrain from arrogant or self-important behavior. I vow to teach the Dharma with generosity and an open heart. I vow to put the teachings of the Buddha Dharma into practice in my everyday life, and to teach others how to do the same. I vow to be a Sangha member who acts with integrity and accountability. I vow to share all offerings made to the Dharma or the Sangha. I vow to accept invitations given equally to all others and refrain from accepting invitations that include, exclude anyone based on gender, race, religion, physical condition, age, or sexual orientation. I vow to be inclusive and to invite all people equally, regardless of gender, race, religion, physical condition, or sexual orientation. I vow to conduct my livelihood in a way that is helpful to myself 
and others and refrain from business practices that limit the freedom or happiness of others. I vow to give all Sangha members equal consideration and respect and to refrain from engaging in any actions that might cause division or conflict. I vow to respect all clergy members and dharmic objects. I vow to extend loving kindness indiscriminately to all sentient beings and to greet all experiences with openness, curiosity, and acceptance. I vow to approach all beings with respect and dignity and refrain from objectifying others. I vow to always keep a clear and open mind. My personal favorite. <laughs> I vow to make great vows. El meta. I vow to make firm resolutions. I vow to keep myself safe whenever possible and to refrain from putting myself or others in environments where harm is more, more likely. I vow to respect all members of the Sangha equally. I vow to cultivate wisdom and good judgment. I vow not to unfairly discriminate against others when conferring the precepts. I vow equanimity in teaching the Dharma and will not enter into teaching arrangements for the sake of profit. I vow to offer the precepts only to those who wish to take them with a sincere and open heart. I vow to uphold all of these precepts. I vow to to value the sutras and the ethical guidelines set forth by the Buddha. I vow to teach and serve all sentient beings in ways that are appropriate for who they are. I vow to teach the Dharma in ways that are appropriate and helpful and to refrain from teaching in ways that cause harm. I vow to consistently support the Dharma in my da daily life. I vow to keep the Dharma fresh, alive, and vibrant, and to refrain from any actions that might cause its destruction. So these are called the bodhisattva precepts or vows for a reason, because as we know in Buddhism, the bodhisattva is the being who tirelessly practices for the well-being of all beings. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so kept. Wonderful. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so kept. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you, or can they not? They can be so kept. Candidates, listen carefully. The Tathagata is the most real, the most liberated, and the most awakened who has preached the four cardinal precepts. A bhikshu who violates any of these four is not a bhikshu and is not a member of the Shakya clan. You shall not commit the impure. From now on, for the rest of your life, you will not commit any improper sexual act, any impure action, or any thought. Do you wish to take this precept? Namo Amitabha Buddha. Yes, I do. You shall not steal. From now on, for the rest of your life, you will not take into your possession precious things like money, silver, gold, jewels, small items like a needle or a stem of grass. A bhikshu who steals things that do not belong to them is not a bhikshu, is not a member of the Shakya clan. Do you wish to take this precept? Namo Amitabha Buddha. Yes, I do. You shall not kill. From now on, for the rest of your life, you will refrain from taking the life of sentient beings, whether it is the life of a human being or that of an ant. The bhikshu who kills or asks someone to kill is not a bhikshu, is not a member of the Shakya clan. Do you wish to take this precept? Namo Amitabha Buddha. Yes, I do. You shall not lie. From now on, for the rest of your life, you will not tell lies, will not fabricate things, will not practice double talk. A bhikshu who is not a saint but claims himself to be one is not a bhikshu, is not a member of the Shakya clan. 
Do you wish to take this precept? Namo Amitabha Buddha. Yes, I do. I have explained and conferred upon you the four cardinal precepts. We have explained and conferred upon you the four cardinal precepts. You ought to observe them properly for life. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you or can they not? They can be so kept. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you or can they not? They can be so kept. Can these precepts, each one of them, be kept by you or can they not? They can be so kept. Okay, we're all going to read this together, uh, but you'll have your microphones off. <clears throat> From this present life until we attain Buddhahood, we shall resolutely uphold these precepts and not break them. We aspire that the Buddhas serve as a witness, for we shall never depart from these precepts, preferring rather first to give up our lives. As I alluded to earlier, this is the repentance ritual. And this was my teacher's favorite part. I think we all have things to repent for, regardless of our commitment to upholding the precepts. And this is an opportunity to shed that karma. <clears throat> I do most earnestly repent of my transgressions committed since beginningless time through my greed, my anger, and my ignorance in thought, word, and deed. I do now repent for the grave offense of taking any life. I do now repent the grave offense of taking things not given. I do now repent the grave offense of wrong actions done in lust. I do now repent the grave offense of boasting of my non-existent spiritual attainments. I do now repent the grave offense of vain speech. I do now repent the grave offense of abusive speech. I do now repent the grave offense of hypocritical speech. I do now repent the grave offense of endless craving. I do now repent the grave offense of my ignorance. May all offenses accumulated during hundreds of kalpas now be totally consumed in an instant as fire burns dry grass, extinguishing all things until nothing remains. Our offenses have no self nature, but arise only from our minds. If our minds are extinguished, then our offenses too will be destroyed. When both our minds and our offenses are extinguished and both are seen as transparent, this is termed the true repentance. The affirmation of repentance preceptees repeat along for the following segment with your microphones on mute. Om Salva Mocha Moji Sadaya Sabaha. Om Salva Mocha Moji Sadaya Sabaha. Om Salva Mocha Moji Sadaya Sabaha. We now humble ourselves in repentance for all karmic hindrances accumulated for many kalpas. We desire that our transgressions and their karmic hindrance be totally removed and that life after life, we may always walk the path to enlightenment. Now you're going to bow three times to the beat of the muktak. for taking the five precepts. Since we can't actually hand you this in person, uh, this certificate is a certificate of refuge. It entails uh, 
the five presets that you've taken as part of taking refuge. The quote is from Bodhidharma. If you pass through this gate, do not give rise to thinking, not dependent on words and speech, a special transmission outside the scriptures, find your heart mind and become Buddha. And this is to certify that on the ninth day of July in the year 2023, Bailey Sheridan, original name, Heng Yong Chita, Buddhist name, which translates as courage action, took the five precepts at One Mind Zen as a lay practitioner. Congratulations, you may now don your gasa. Congratulations. Um, okay, so this one is for uh, having taken the 10 precepts. Uh, it also has the five sacred verses of Bodhidharma. If you pass through this gate, do not give rise to thinking, not dependent on words and speech, a special transmission outside the scriptures, find your heart mind and become Buddha. And this is to certify that on the ninth day of July in the year 2023, Kevin Sheridan, original name, Hei Song, Buddhist name, Ocean Truth translation, took 10 precepts at One Mind Zen as a novice priest. Congratulations. So, 58 precepts. Non-discrimination, do not make good and bad or get involved in appearing or disappearing. Harmonize with every Dharma without concern for remembering or forgetting. Do not be seduced with intelligence and learning. Abandon your attachments to body and mind. Then true freedom is attained, discovering at last your true undefiled self while sitting in silence like a great oak tree or a massive granite boulder. Don't be misled by perceptions. Only here is there nothing left to discriminate. And that's from Bai Zhang Hoi Hai. And this is to certify that on the ninth day of July in the year 2023, Thomas Daniels, original name, Minui Maitri, Buddhist name, Compassionate Justice is the translation, took 58 precepts at One Mind Zen as a Bodhisattva priest. Congratulations to all of you. Yes. Um, wise are you who understand the impermanence of this world. You've cast aside the conventional and have now entered into the stream of awakening, a state of being not easily understood and rare in this world. How good it is, the robe of liberation, a robe of highest merit. We do now receive it, and may we receive it perpetually, moment after moment hereafter. Most noble is the Buddha. What person does not take joy in the Buddha? Calling to mind this assembly, we now obtain the benefits of this Dharma. May the merits received by undertaking the precepts be given to others. May our merits be perfect, and may they benefit all sentient creatures. For should we fill 3,000 worlds with supas of purest gold to encourage one person to seek the renunciate life, outweighs all of this merit. Well, I would like to thank all of you for participating, taking time out of your busy lives, not only to attend, but especially those devotees who are dedicating themselves to this practice. We are at a very precarious point in, in human history. I don't know when, when there wasn't a precarious point, but especially now where we live in the United States, there's so much hatred tearing this nation apart. And it's gonna take a great Bodhisattva's patience, wisdom, and compassion to serve as an inspiration for an alternate way of treating one another with dignity and respect. And I thank all of you who made that, devoted, that devotion today. But as the repentance ritual teaches us, this is something that we, we cultivate and we're gonna, we're gonna fall off the rails at times. But what we do is we straighten ourselves up, 
brush, brush ourselves off and we go back to our practice. So thank you, everybody who's taken those vows today. I wish you the best in your practice. Now you have something to uh, guide you in your behavior in case you needed it. Sometimes we all do, even after having taken the precepts, they're good reminders of what we said we're going to do, what our aspiration to live a proper, correct life. One of the uh, things in there that I read referred to uh, Sung San's situation, relationship, and function. And that means that we uphold the precepts in a way that's beneficial for all beings and we respond to each situation in the appropriate manner. We don't just, you know, hammer down, oh, do not kill. Do not lie. We respond appropriately to each situation as it comes up for the, same, uh, for the sake of all beings. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to all of you new preceptees, um, especially uh, to you, um, Hongan Chida, I think I got that correct, for taking your first five precepts. Um, and welcome to all of you to your new level of commitment to your practice, to your new level of commitment to the Sangha, and to your new level of commitment uh, to all beings. Um, I'd like to echo um, Venerable Unsan a bit. Uh, our precepts, I think especially the first 10, they can serve as a uh, compass uh, to guide us, especially in those moments when we get overwhelmed by um, craving, hatred, uh, delusion, and um, and we can't see the, the path for ourselves and need someone to, or something to help guide us along. Um, you know, so these precepts can serve as a compass and as this compass, they, our precepts can uh, bring us peace. And more importantly, they can blunt our excesses to bring peace to those around us. And so, um, as many of you heard me say many times, I urge all of us to periodically return to a deliberate study of our precepts. They are a wonderful gift, and let's not lose the opportunities that they offer us. Congratulations, everybody. We're going to close this ceremony with uh, the four great vows, which are often recited at the end of <clears throat> root practice. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow yeah. to help them all. Delusions. Delusions are countless. We vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless. We vow to embody it. And that's what this ceremony is a celebration of, embodying that Buddha Dharma in all aspects of our lives. And we're going to fall short. So don't be too heavy handed on yourself if, that, if and when that happens. Okay. Our practice is circular, just like that one mind Zen collective that Enso that I see in the center of the, of the Zoom screen. Around and around we go, our practice. Thank you, because it is a gift, but it's also a commitment as well.